there are a lot of beliefs, you know, like an imaginary, you know, things about the HR that usually HR, they don't need a support. And even though they don't have any problems, they should not have any problems because they know how to fix everything. <laughs> and this yeah. is also like a, a really, I mean, it's, it gives a pressure, you know, on the shoulders. Hi everyone, welcome back to the HR Leaders Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Inga Staniuni, who's the Chief HR Officer uh, via Solutions Group. During the podcast, Inga shares why emotional intelligence and vulnerability makes you a better leader and how understanding yourself helps you reach your career and life goals. As always, before we jump into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell and follow on your favorite podcast platform. With that being said, let's jump in. Inga, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, I'm perfect today. How are you anyway? How are things? Things are really good, actually. Uh, I have a lot of um, like insights after, you know, like um, after the summer, you know, from my, you know, personal experience, you know, like and uh, and professional area. So and this is, you know, I was waiting for that uh, meeting for that uh, podcast just to to share what's new. Tomorrow I'm start starting my new journey, like uh, by energetic analysis training, psychotherapy training. Just recently came back from the leadership conference, which was amazing. So yeah, a lot of things around. I would say new lows and streams to follow. How do you normally prioritize your time in terms of learning? Is it like during your commute or in the evening? sacrificing a bit of holidays or weekends it's not about you know like learning in the evening so you know like my spare time so yes tomorrow is the day that uh, usually I, I have to go to work and then it means that um, I'm taking my holidays my spare time because of myself and this is the big, biggest investment you know what, what I can get yeah. so yeah and the pr priority is you know like yeah uh, holidays or you know or extra days depends on which purpose you know I'm doing my this you know wow. um, development that's quite interesting right because you know, you're taking your personal holidays as time to invest in yourself. It may sound strange to some people because they're like, why would you spend holidays working? But if you're passionate about what you do and you're ex and you're excited to learn and grow and develop, then that's something you also can you can enjoy that <laughs> uh, as well, right? So what what's top of mind for you right now? You know, as I mentioned, I mean, there are a lot of, you know, um, things, you know, different things, you know, that I've that I've been, you know, like during the summertime and now and somehow, you know, after the leadership conference, which was about, you know, um, exploring uh, leadership and authority and working with desires and fears. I just came up with a few, you know, topics related to leadership and as well as the nature function or professionals. It's um, how we define, I mean, what we want to do in our life. Do we start, I mean, with the designing and projecting the life with a positive note? Or just we list, you know, the fears or those, you know, the worst case scenario that might come, you know, the main message, the main idea. This is what I found out about myself that I'm that I, usually I start all those new beginnings with the desires and the fears. When usually I get, it comes from the environment. It's, it comes through other people. I have never stopped myself with something question, what if? It was always uh, the question, what's next? That's such a good point. And because uh, most people, the fear that you mentioned is what paralyzes them. Then they take no action. Um, whereas you're saying you're excited by that. And it's almost, what if? what if I don't do it? When you were speaking to those leaders, what were the fears that they were mentioning? I mean, there were variety, but what comes like the first thing is not having a followers, you know, when you are a leader, you know, so there should be a followers that follows you as a, as a leader. And then it comes, you know, the topic, which is also kind of um, that I'm, you know, like um, kind of trying to, to dig deeper and investigate more is the loneliness in le leadership, which means that also that you don't have followers, you know, as a leader, or you are lack of followers, you are lack of those who support your ideas. And, you know, goes as um, um, goes after you just simply because you are, you know, like a great leader. And this is about, you know, loneliness, which comes to you know, like, especially for those people who are first time managers. So that's another topic where I'm in now as I'm starting, you know, leadership program in the degree, which is for first time leaders. And uh, loneliness topic is one of peaking, I would say. I think that these were the main topics as well as, you know, being um, being seen or visible. 
and of course to have a voice and this is also the the fear just to lose the voice among I don't know, like uh, the third parties among your colleagues, among subordinates, among, I don't know, like the, the entire organization. So why do you think that that fear comes from not being followed? Do, do, they, mm -hmm. do they feel that they have to be followed in order to be valued? I think that what happens, you know, when we go up, you know, in terms of the leadership, you know, and the career, it's really rare to get uh, to get a you know, sincere and proper feedback. I mean, there is a really, you know, like a small group of colleagues or, you know, fellows or, you know, partners whom you can trust in terms of the feedback. In some cases, I mean, you're just losing the the proper sense of, you know, like uh, of, the, of the life and the ground. And somehow you cannot be grounded as a, as a leader without the feedback. And this is, I mean, essential and the key element, I would say like, no matter which position you are in, no matter what role you are taking. And that's the main, you know, driver that you can use for your personal growth and development. I think though, when that happens, you do have to ask yourself a question because I don't think it's a case of people don't want to give feedback, but do you, are you showing that you're actually open? I've heard leaders in the past say, I don't, I, I never heard this before and no one's ever told me this. There's probably a reason why, because you're not showing that you're open to feedback. Or if someone has given you feedback, you've just shut them down, right? Um, so from a cultural standpoint, that's something you, they need to have that psychological safety <laughs> in order to feel like they can give feedback. I've heard so many leaders say this, I don't get any feedback or no one told me this and they become disconnected. And you kind of realize, well, you haven't created the environment to where, where people feel they can give you feedback uh, as well. I would say that it's two-way communication and it's two-way, you know, like the truth in, the, in, the, in both hands. It means that, uh, you know, yeah, there are some, you know, some leaders who, who do not demonstrate that they are willing to get that feeling, uh, that feedback. On the other hand, you know, like I would say there is a also, I would say, um, a belief that uh, if you are uh, a top manager, so you are strong enough, you know, to carry and to survive in those, you know, like different, you know, uh, situations, and you know, uh, you know the best what to do. You are, you know, the, yeah, the superhero to, you know, just to save all of us, you know, and just to show the direction. So in some cases, I mean, it's really, you know, like, um, yeah, I would say that somehow, somehow it's a belief that, you know, CEOs, they don't need a support or the leaders, they don't need a support because no, they know what the best. And this is, you know, comes with another, you know, issue, just how to be, you know, a leader without, you know, losing that um, um, humanity or that, you know, just how to show your vulnerability uh, and just to find that, you know, appropriate level when it's, you know, good to show that you are vulnerable and you are really lost in some cases or lack of, you know, like I would say um, lack of um, ideas, how just to fix all those situations or just go out of that, you know, like difficult difficulties uh, at the same point, you know, like keeping that, you know, level of, um, you know, being the person who can take a decision so that's you know the another point it's, and the it's really... a balance <laughs> the balance that's true you said that last time we spoke right it, it, it you mentioned it's okay not to be okay it depends you know on the um on the environment in which you you are and you you work and live i can share my personal example you know i'm doing my psychotherapy I really started to share a lot, I mean, about psychotherapy, that's what I'm getting out of that activity. And, you know, guess what happened? I have in my team now three people going to personal individual psychotherapy. And I think that it was, you know, a silent inspiration, you know, or the influence for them to, to start, you know, um, to give more support or just to start giving this care for themselves. This is what I shared because I started to go again to psychotherapy in February, back in February, because of to, well, because of my personal situation. I'm going through the divorce, you know, uh, process now, and of course I needed a support. But what happens then? I mean, if you start sharing, for example, in the another, you know, kind of, you know, group of people who are not so, you know, empathetic or something 
which means that uh, there are a lot of expectations or beliefs linked to, to the certain, um, I would say, roles. And especially when it comes, for example, to the HR person or the CEO, it means that those people, they cannot have any problems or issues in the personal life as well, no matter about the, you know, the work, but personal life as well. This is why I'm telling that it's really sensitive, because in some cases, if you are not ready to share that, if you don't have appropriate support for that, it can hurt. Mm -hmm. Because those expectations, how could you are nature? You are a psychotherapist. You have your issues, personal issues. Yeah. How could it be? And that's a stigma that people can be stigmatized. So, and this is really, really important. I mean, just to get appropriate support uh, when it's needed. How was this journey shaped you as a leader in terms of the psychotherapy, in terms of the, um, the journey that you've been on? Um, I'm still on the, on, uh, in the process, you know, of just to, to find my, you know, comfortable seat or the chair as a leader. And I think that it's never ending process. But what I can say, uh, just looking back at my journey, being more, um, I would say, focused on a task rather than, you know, just to save the entire world. Uh, in some cases, of course, it's, um, I mean, it's about boundaries. So just to set boundaries where you can support and help. And in some cases you cannot. So just you, you just give a feedback that unfortunately it's not the area of responsibility that I'm in and just maybe I can I can help you somehow uh, in this situation so uh, I think that yeah I've just learned more about boundaries how to say you know in some cases no when when it comes like uh, with your personal work-life balance on the other hand you know like um, um, psychotherapy what gave me to understand and just to go deeper when a person for example resists or says no so after all no's or, or those resistances or, you know, like denials or whatever it can be, there is a story you know, behind, which means that it's either, you know, some, some story related to, to the work issues or personal issues. And that's, you know, this is what I'm trying sometimes to understand what's going on in that person or the individual life. Yeah, yeah. And how can I, you know, help I mean, that person. Mm -hmm. And when it comes, you know, to some, you know, discussions, argues, you know, like, or disputes and etc. So my question is usually is that, how are you in general? Yeah, I normally mean, behind the, yeah, normally behind that is not, it's nothing to do with work or it's not a work particularly, mm -hmm. it's how they're feeling personally and things happening outside um, mm -hmm. of that. You're right. Like most of the time, my, my experience is that's been the case. It's interesting because we started this conversation saying it can be lonely at the top sometimes we started talking about it's, it's hard to get feedback and i feel like some of the most affected leaders is hr because who does hr talk to when they have a challenge at work you know you know a lot of people have someone to turn to right but who do you go to as a chro so before i let you go for those hr leaders listening or those future chros what advice would you give to them who are on their journey to sit in the role of CHRO like yourself? And this is what I mentioned, that there are a lot of beliefs, you know, like an imaginary, you know, things about the HR, that usually HR, they don't need a support. And even though they don't have any problems, they should not have any problems because they know how to fix everything. <laughs> and this yeah. is also like a, a really, I mean, it's, it gives a pressure, you know, on the shoulders. And what I did actually, I launched one uh, HR support group before COVID. And unfortunately, we were stopped because of those restrictions, you know, like not to gather with them, et cetera. And then I, I did another group. I gathered another group this year. So we had um, 12 to 15 meetings. Of course, it was done locally, but I would love just to make, just to make this, you know, kind of a support group, you know, on a global scale. And that was amazing. And, you know, what happened when we started, you know, to make a parallels, you know, like in between experience, professional experience and their personal life, there were so, you know, like matching points. There were so matching points about decision making. There were so matching points about the situations there and that, that, you know, those HR people, they had to 
you know, to sacrifice something or just to, you know, just to live with that, you know, feelings or one on another about the loneliness as well. So that was, you know, like there were a lot of, you know, discoveries that were, I would say that that, uh, that, that meeting was uh, and that support group is one of the initiatives or the one of those resource source of resources that HR can get. Because mm-hmm. I mean, for me, that was, you know, uh, also um, an insight when during the um, my annual appraisal process, my direct manager, CEO said, I do understand you work as an emergency. Can you imagine what emergency means? Yeah. I mean, you're all the time, you know, like in, a, in some kind of, in a peak, you know. In like, some kind like of... in a constant fight or flight mode okay. um, as well. And I think that's great advice. I think the, what I took away from that is for people listening, find a good group, you know, a local network, um, a community that you can tap into. You'll realize very quickly you, that you're not alone. <laughs> there are many that's... other people that feel the same way. But as you said, it can be very lonely. And that's something I've come across in my personal conversations with your colleagues all over the world during the years that I've been doing this. And no one really talks about it that much. We talk about the well-being of our employees, but we don't talk about the well-being of ourselves. Uh, So I think this has been a great... um, I appreciate you taking the time on this episode to share your personal journey and challenges because it's important. But, uh, so I appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing. It, it means a lot. It was my pleasure actually to share because I do believe that uh, it can open some windows or doors to to someone to start a new beginning. Well, listen, I think it'll be great to leave it there. Before I let you go, where can people connect with you if they want to reach out and say hi? I think that LinkedIn is the best, you know, uh, way to to get just to get me, you know, like in into some conversations. Yeah, LinkedIn. amazing. Fantastic. Well, um, wish you all the best on the, on the journey. It feels like you're definitely a continuous learner <laughs> as you love, you have a clear passion for learning, um, which is great because you have to be to be in the role that you have <laughs> in general and um, appreciate your time. And for everyone listening, there'll be a link in the description to connect with Inga on LinkedIn if you want to reach out and say hi. Um, but apart from that, I appreciate you sharing your journey and I wish you all the best until we next week. Thank you once more.